All right, boys, what is up? Welcome to episode four of AJ Academy. Today, I'm going to be going over what a fair value gap is and what an inverse fair value gap is. They're both extremely useful confluences that I use on a daily basis. They're actually my favorite form of confluence. I use these almost, actually every trade I take, I'm pretty sure I use a fair value gap, if not some sort of other confluence that I will teach you guys in this bootcamp. So what is a fair value gap? A fair value gap is an imbalance in price that is waiting to be filled. And we can play it in two ways. I'm going to show you two examples of fair value gaps. So here is a bullish example and here is a bearish example. But before we get into the examples, I want you guys to understand that it is a three candle pattern. There is three candles that form a fair value gap, right? An inverse fair value gap is something else. I will teach you guys that at the end of the video. But for now, just understand how to identify the formation of a fair value gap, right? So a fair value gap is going to be an imbalance in price, right? Price will either respect that imbalance or disrespect that imbalance. And that is how we are going to base our trades, right? So this is a bullish fair value gap because we have three up close candles forming a imbalance in the market, right? You see the first candle's wick and the third candle's wick do not overlap within the body of the second candle. If you get rid of that drawing, you can see this is what it looks like, right? Candles one, two, three and the wick of the first one and the bottom so the for a bullish fair value gap the bot the top wick of the first candle and the bottom wick of the third should not overlap within the body of the second candle right you can see right here this is a bearish fair value gap because we have what one two three candles where the first top the first candles wick and the third candles wick don't overlap price taps into it respects it and then shits the bed right that is how we use fair value gaps and that is how we trade them on a daily basis so how are we going to draw them out we draw them out with the rectangle make sure you guys have this is my toolbar um so you guys copy it you're going to need a rectangle this is the rectangle tool all right you draw it from the top wick of the first candle to the bottom wick of the third candle right these do not need to be up closing candles only this only the middle candle has to be an up closing candle, all right? This could be a red candle and this could be a red candle. But the first one, the, the one in the middle, I mean, does have to be a bullish candle, all right? This is going to be displacement. This is there where there's going to be a lot of orders waiting to be filled, right? And the way we want this to play out is we want price to retrace into this and give us a nice rejection to the upside before taking out more levels of buy side liquidity. Let's say we have buy side liquidity resting up here, right? There's a level of buy side. Let me draw that out so it's easy for you guys to see, right? This line is buy side liquidity. This is what we we learned, I think, a few days ago, right, guys? We learned about how to identify buy side and sell side, highs and lows in the markets that are orders waiting to be filled so the institutions can fill their own orders at a better price, right? So what we're going to do is wait for price to fall into an imbalance in the market where price is at a discount for banks to buy. This is going to be a fair value gap. This displacement candle in the middle, there's thousands of millions of orders waiting to be filled right here. So what is price going to do? It's going to come down, reject off it, and give us probably a better sort of entry here where we can ride the market and make sure price pushes up, right? So that is a three candle pattern that I'm trying to teach you guys how to identify it. I'm not gonna teach you guys how to use it before I can teach you guys how to actually identify it because how the fuck are you supposed to use something you don't even know how to see, right? So three candles, bullish, one, two, three. The first candle is high and second candle and third candle is low. Do not overlap. The second candle does have to be an expansion candle to the upside, right? Now, bearish fair value gap, right? We are going to have, let's just say we have sell side, right? This low, let's carry this low out, right? We have sell side liquidity. Now we have sell side liquidity. Let me drag this over so you guys can see, right? This is a bearish fair value gap. We have sell side liquidity resting below us. Price never tapped into it. It failed to reach it, right? What we want price to do once again, a bearish fair value gap is going to be three candles to the downside. And the middle candle is going to be an expansion down close candle where the first candle and second, second and third candles, I mean, top and bottom wick do not overlap, right? So the difference between a bullish and bearish is going to be a bullish the middle candle is going to be an expansion candle to the upside and a bearish is going to be an expansion candle to the downside now i do want to say that's self-explanatory but i've been in your shoes learning before and i guarantee you it is not 
self-explanatory for the majority of you guys because I did not get this the first few tries. So, I'm going to try to do my best to explain this to you guys. So, it is a three-candled pattern, right? One, two, three. One, two, three. The wicks do not overlap within the second second candle's expansion move, right? So for a bearish fair value gap, the second candle has to be an expansion candle to the downside where the first body's low, first candle's low and third candle's high. Do not overlap between a given price range. And we draw the fair value gap out with the rectangle tool, like I mentioned before. And we draw it from the wicks, the wick of the first candle to the wick of the third. And if there's no gap to be drawn, then there's no fair value gap there, right? What we want price to do, right, is to retrace into this fair value gap before giving us a proper entry to take out more levels of sell side, right? Because the banks want to go long here. They want to get a better fill for their price, for a better price for their fill. Sorry, I said that wrong. Oh, yeah. Mm. Off topic, bro. These are goaded. If you guys ever get a chance, Celsius... Fizz free peach mango, fucking goaded, all right? So this is how we trade fair value gaps, right? This is a normal fair value gap. There is two types of fair value gaps, right? And I'm not talking about bullish and bearish. I'm talking about fair value gaps and inverse fair value gaps. So take a screenshot of this so you guys actually understand what you're going to look at when you want to enter a trade. You want to understand and identify what a fair value gap is. So if you guys don't have me added already on Instagram, TikTok, or Discord, just go ahead and join the Discord and send me as many photos and examples of that that you actually can of a fair value gap. And hopefully I will still be there to answer those. I will tell you that is not a fair value gap because whatever X, Y, Z reason, that is a fair value gap. Congratulations. You know how to identify them now, right? It's a really simple thing and it's something that your eyes will adjust to. So the, the first few weeks that you're staring at the market you're gonna have to like you're gonna have to go and look for them but i guarantee you the more you look at the market the more your eyes will adjust like when i hop on the charts now it's just like oh like instant like my eyes see it your eyes will adjust to the market right so three candle pattern that creates an imbalance in price that price wants to fill right so one two three one two three these do not need to be read the first and third do not have to be read the second one does have to be read for a bullish fair value gap the first and third do not have to be green. Only the middle one has to be green. Let me show you, let me show you guys some live examples, right? This is a bullish fair value gap right here. Yes, it did not hold. It is still a bullish fair value gap. Not every fair value gap is going to hold. And this is what I'm saying about there's two types of fair value gaps. There's a fair value gap and there's an inverse fair value gap. An inverse fair value gap is a fair value gap, right? Shit, my bad. Inverse fair value gap. Commonly referred to, if you see my TikToks or videos, they're, they're going to be called IFVGs. FVG is a fair value gap. FVG, that's what it stands for. FVG, fair value gap. Like I said, screenshot this, you're going to need it. You're going to need to identify fair value gaps in the market, identify bullish and bearish fair value gaps, right? We also use fair value gaps in the opposite sense. We also want them to get disrespected sometimes. If we are bearish, we want a bullish fair value gap to get disrespected, right? So inverse fair value gap is when a fair value gap, you see how this one got respected, price tapped into it, and we pushed off, kept going, price tapped into it, and we kept pushing lower, right? So from what I taught you guys, you would expect price to tap into this, and then just move higher and take out more levels of buy side. That's not always going to happen, right? Not Market's not always going to want to move in our favors. But what we can do is play with what the market gives us. We're not always going to be right about the market. We have to work with what the market is going to give us, and that is what makes a great trader. You have to adapt to life conditions, right? Part of that is understanding how to trade an inverse fair value gap, all right? In this scenario, we have a bullish fair value gap. What does price do? It closes below it, right? Look at this closure. When price closes below, where the fuck is my tool at? I'm trying to draw for you guys. Can't even draw. Bro, all right, here. Look at the candle's close. That's the candle's close, right? When the candle closes below this fair value gap, right, the wick 
of the first candle, top wick to the bottom wick of the third candle, gives us a range. When the candle closes below the given range, this fair value gap is no longer a valid confluence, right? So what did we do? We disrespected it. When we disrespect a bullish confluence, that is a sign to go short. That is a sign that, hey, maybe the market does not want to push up any higher because what we are taught is that if the market wants to push higher, it will reject off this given level. And if the market is not rejecting off that given level, what is that telling us? Oh shit, maybe the market wants to push lower, right? In this scenario, the market closes below our bullish confluence. And what do we immediately do? Push lower. Yo, why are you doing this to me? Like, get out on my screen. Right? Look. So a lot of people probably entered short here, stops above that high, targeting all these levels of sell side right here, right? And that is a trade in itself, right? Because what did we do? We took out, this is kind of already showing you guys how to actually enter a trade. It's so simple. You guys have been watching like what, three videos and you already have an entry model in itself. What is this? What are these highs here? Buy side liquidity. What do we do? We take it out. So all the sellers are now stopped out of the market. So what do the banks want to do? The banks want to get a better fill in their short positions. So now the banks are all going to enter short up here, right? All their fills are up here. But what we can do, we're not the banks. We can't insider trade, right? Look at all this sell side liquidity. Look at all these lows resting right here. We have low there. We have low here. We have a low here. All these lows resting down here. Sell side liquidity for the banks to just come and take, right? That's just free money for them. We close below this bullish fair value gap, giving us a sign that price wants to push lower. So I hope you guys actually understand what an inverse fair value gap is. An inverse fair value gap is not a pattern. It is just a disrespect of a fair value gap. So first, first things first, I want you guys to understand what a fair value gap is before you go and even try to understand what an inverse fair value gap is. If you guys want, I can make another video about it in the future so you guys can actually focus on fair value gaps. I don't know if it was the smartest choice for me to teach you guys both in a or teach you guys both confluences in the same video, but I hope you guys can actually understand it because it is really simple, but I just really don't want to overwhelm you guys for the time being, right? So a little quick recap of what I just taught you guys. A fair value gap is a three candle pattern. Candles one, two, three for a bullish. Oh, what the fuck happened to my voice? For a bullish fair value gap, the second candle has to be an expansion candle to the upside. For a bearish fair value gap, the second candle has to be an expansion candle to the downside, right? And when that happens and the wicks in between the first and third candle do not overlap with the expansion candle's body, that gives us an imbalance in price where orders are waiting to be filled, right? And if we don't reject that imbalance and we end up disrespecting it, we could play the opposite end of the spectrum, right? So what would happen here? If we have a bullish fair value gap, right? If we have a bullish fair value gap and price comes and closes below it, right? What the fuck? Yeah, all right, bro. Disrespecting the fair value gap. Now we can expect price to push lower. So fair value gaps is one of the only concepts that I will teach you that work vice versa. So if it holds, it's a good sign to go long. And if it fails, it's a good sign to go short. But you guys should not take every fair value gap you see and you will eventually learn why. Because it does not always hold. You have to know which trades are the highest confluences. If every fair value gap held, everyone would be a fucking billionaire. Literally just take every fair value gap you see, like you will probably lose most of your trades, right? So when you disrespect it, this is an inverse fair value gap, right? What the fuck? All right. This, again, this is a inverse fair value gap to the upside because we invalidated the imbalance in the market telling us that, hey, price wants to push higher, right? And we can actually use this in our favor sometimes because 
let's say there is a bullish fair value gap that price taps into. You see how price taps into this bullish fair value gap. And we have a bearish fair value gap right here. If price taps into a bullish fair value gap and inverse a bearish fair value gap, that is telling us that price may most definitely want to push higher. That is giving us two confluences. We are respecting a bullish confluence and disrespecting a bearish one telling us, hey, price wants to push higher, right? So this is a great example of a long we would take. And I do take a lot of trades like this, right? You take a long to who knows where, right? Other levels of buy side liquidity. And let me just show you guys some quick examples in person or in real market time, right? So this is a bearish fair value gap, right? Candle one. Let me move it more here so you guys can see. Right? Candle one, two, three. This is a perfect example of what I was telling you guys. Not every candle has to be an up close candle. Down close candle, expansion candle to the upside, down close candle. But what does that create? It creates a fair value gap. This is a bullish fair value gap. Did it ever get tapped into? No, it doesn't have to get tapped into, but this is a bullish fair value gap, right? What do we have here? Down close candle, one, two, three, right? The wick of this candle and the wick of this candle does not overlap in the second candle's expansion move. Down, or what I'm saying, bearish fair value gap, not down close candle. And as you see, price taps into it and does come and take out this level of sell side, right? So price comes down, takes out sell side, stops buyers out of the market before we rip back up to the upside, right? Let's see if we can find some more example for you guys. Some more examples, sorry. All right, here. Candle one, two, three. This candle's wick and this candle's wick do not overlap. Bearish fair value gap. What does price do? Closes above, invalidating it, right? Price rips to the upside, taking out all these highs right here, right? We invalidated a bearish fair value gap after, after taking out all this sell side liquidity. This is telling us, hey, price wants to push higher, right? We invalidate it. But for now, I just want you guys to focus on actually identifying them before you learn how to use them, right? I did give you guys a little sneak peek of how we use them on a day-to-day -day basis. But first, I just really need you guys to understand how do I identify them in the markets? So let me know if you guys have any questions. If you guys already didn't, please take a screenshot or write down your own version of these notes because you will need them. And make sure to go earlier in the video and screenshot the ones I did write originally because those are much better than these. This is a very specific example. I want you guys to write down what I told you guys before with the whole retrace and work off that to take out buy side and retrace to work off that and take out sell side. So let me know if you guys actually understood what I taught you guys today. Remember that I'm learning how to teach with you guys. So if you guys don't understand, just literally just tell me. I'm not going to be offended. Just tell me so I can generally teach you guys how to identify fair value gaps in the market and how we use them to trade them. So I'll see you guys tomorrow. Peace out.